So after we added some functions to our inventory in the last video, we can now go ahead and create the action menu for all of our items. So go into your widgets folder and right click to create a new widget blueprint. Call that one action menu. In here, change the setting to desired on screen and delete the canvas panel. We will start with a size box and in the size box you want to check the width override and set it to something like 150 pixels. Then add a border to the size box that will be the background behind our buttons. Make the padding to zero and give it a brush color of complete black with an alpha of 0.5. Now hit OK. Then on the border we want a vertical box so that all of our buttons appear underneath each other. Grab that. And inside the vertical box we will add a button. And for the button add a text on top of it. Now the first button will be our use button, so call it use button. And set the background color to something like a dark, really dark gray. Hit OK. Then for the text, make it a smaller font size, something like 16 should work. And type in use then make it bold italic so you can see it a bit better and this text will be our use text and it should be a variable because we will change that according to our item then you can copy the use button and paste it into our vertical box so the next button will be our throw away button make that italic and the font size of 15 then you can call that throw button go to the vertical box again and paste another button that will be our split button grab the text type in split stacks make it italic again font size of 14 and then for the last time go to the vertical box paste something and the use button will be our cancel button change the text to cancel and this time make it bold and a font size of 15 just so you can see the use and the cancel text much better because that will be the button you will use most frequently. All right, for the use text that are not on our use button, uncheck the is variable so we don't get confused here. Then go to the event graph and in here we will need some variables. First one will be in reference to our inventory again. Make it BP inventory reference then we will need our current index so the index of our item that we are using at the moment which will be an integer create another one that will be the item info at our current index and for the variable type will be s underscore item info and the last one will be the amount of items on the slot, which will be an integer. Then we'll create another function, and that will be our update function. So whenever we click on a button, we will call that update functions to define which of our buttons are shown and to define our use text here. Right, so for the update function, create a new input, that will be the new index with an integer type. And first thing you want to do is grab in the current index and set that to the new index. Then grab in our inventory and search for get item info at index. 
the index will be our current index since we updated that already and then you can set our item info to the item info from, from our function here and set the amount to the amount here. Now we want to see which actions we can execute with our current item. So grab in the item info, break that, expand it and we created this boolean called can be used. Search for a branch. If it can be used, you want to grab in our use text and set text. And the in text will be our use text from the as item info. After that, grab in our use button and set its visibility to visible. However, if it can't be used, we will grab in our use button, copy that here, set the visibility this time to collapsed and let's hop over to the designer because when you make a button collapsed we can check how this will look by toggling the editor visibility if we hit that on our use button you can see that all of them move upwards a bit and that's what we want so so after we checked for our use button we want to check for our throw away button and we can throw away every item if it isn't a quest item. So grab the category and search for equal, double equal. And here choose the quest item. Then search for a branch. And connect the false path and the true path of, of our first branch to the next branch. So if it is a quest item, we will get our throw button, set its visibility. To collapse if it isn't and copy that and this time set it to visible and at the end we want to go for another branch this time we will check our can be stacked and whether our amount is greater than one because that will be the condition for us to be able to split our stack and at the end, search for a branch, connect both execution paths again. And if it can be split, we will get our split button, set the visibility to visible. If it can't be split, grab that and set it to collapse. And after that, we will return. All right, compile and save. That's it for our update function. Now we can go to the designer, select our use button, scroll down and search for the on clicked event. When we click the use button, we will grab in our inventory and search for use item at index. Index will be our current index. And after we did that, we want to hide our action menu. So just search for set visibility to hidden then we can go to the designer again go to our cancel button do that one next on clicked we will just want to set our visibility to hidden go to the designer again get our split button at a clicked event then we'll get our inventory and we search for our split stack stack index will be our current index and we just want to split it in half so the amount will be our amount divided by two plug that in and after we split the stack again set the visibility to hidden now the last one for our throw button when we click that for now we just want to grab in the inventory remove item at index index will be our current index amount will be one and after we did that set visibility to hidden again however in some of the next videos we will come in here and change that function because currently we, we would have to click 50 times to remove 50 health potions so we will change that later but for now it will work now compile and save that's it for our action menu 
Now we also have to place that in our inventory widget. So go to the inventory. And here for our canvas panel, you will go to user created in the palette and search for our action menu. Grab that and drag it on top of our canvas panel. Call that one. Yeah, you could call it action menu. Make sure it's size to content. So it's completely shown here. And what I do is go to the color and lower the alpha to something like 0.8. So you can see through it a bit. Then for the position in X and Y, set that to the position you want to appear it at when you click the first slot in our inventory. When I created this project, I just used eight and the position in Y will be 52. Now when we click a slot, we want to update the position of our action menu inside the inventory so it appears at the slot we click. And that we will do with the render transform. Under transform, there is the translation. And you can see when I drag the translation here, it will move to the left or to the right and an X up and down. So I'll set that to zero again. And in our inventory, we will go to the event graph and add a custom event. Call that one on slot click. Also, you want to have an input and that will be a reference to the slot we clicked. Call that slot. Its type will be inventory slot widget reference here. And then we want to do some math. From our slot, search for uniform slot as uniform grid slot. So we have access to the row and to the column that define our position in the inventory. Then you want to multiply them by 64. If you're wondering where that value comes from, that is the size of our inventory slot. Do the same thing for the column and for the row we'll have to do something else because we are using a scroll box here. Also for the scroll box give it a name. Call that uh, inventory scroll box. Make it a variable and for the row convert that to a float right now. Then what we want to do is to subtract from it and the value we want to subtract comes from our scroll box and that will be our scroll offset divided by 1.5 by the way you don't have to understand why it's working that way I just found out that it works by experimenting with some values here and plug that in for the subtraction the subtracted value you also want to clamp from 0 to 200. So when we go to the designer again for our action menu and set the translation in Y to 200, it will only appear at this position and it will not go further down here. Set that back to 0. Now for the graph, you off of the clamp float, you want to make a vector vector 2d Re return value will be the y and the x comes from our column multiplied by 64 now from that vector we want to grab in our action menu and set the render translation to our vector here after that Take the action menu again and search for update. The new index will come from the slot index. Off of our slot, search for index, get slot index, drag that over and plug it in for the new index. And finally, we want to show our action menu. So set visibility to visible. Now there are two other things we have to do before we can test. First, compile and save go to our main widget and on construction after we set the the inventory reference of our inventory widget we also want to get our 
menu and set its inventory reference set inventory to our inventory reference just so we pass through the inventory reference from our main widget to the inventory widget and then for to the action menu now we'll have to go inside of our inventory slot and because we want to use the right click to show the action menu we can't use our button here but we will go to the graph and override a function called on mouse button down so on mouse button down we first want to get our slot button and check whether it's enabled get is enabled and branch off of it because this function will also be fired if our slot button is not enabled but we don't want to do anything if that is the case so when it's not enabled go to the return node and for the return value type in handled but if it is enabled drag off the mouse event and search for is mouse button down for the mouse button so show the right mouse button off it search for a branch so now when our mouse button is down our right mouse button we want to get our inventory reference off of that get the inventory widget and of the inventory widget we want to call the function we created which was on slot clicked connect that to the true slot will be ourself and after that we return with handled again with handled and of the false also going to the return node here so now we can compile and save but before we test go back to the inventory widget sorry i forgot to turn off the visibility here so I'll make the visibility here hidden now compile save and play when we right click on an empty slot nothing happens but if we pick up our health potions we can right click and we see the drink which was our custom use text throw away split stacks and cancel if we cancel it will be hidden if we right click and drink you use health potion there are only 49 left when we throw one away 48 left and we can split the stack and we now have 24 on two stacks also here with our map when we right click there the use text changes to read and we cannot split the stack because it's not stackable and if we go back to our level here and just grab one pickup actor hit alt and drag it somewhere to change its item to add to the oh wait you will go to the inventory system blueprints item classes go to item ring open it in full blueprint editor and compile and save it once there is a bug of 412 i think now you can select the ring here and add one if we hit play pick that ring up remember it's a quest item and it cannot be used or stacked so the only thing we can do with it is to cancel out and we cannot throw it away all right that's it for this video in the next one we will probably create a throw away widget so we can throw away more than one item at once. See you then.